Thanks for stopping by. If you want to learn how to use these matrices using MD Parola and MD Max 7219, you're in the right place. In this series, we're going to start off very basic, making this counter and learning how to use fonts. And then we're going to grow the project over the next few videos to make a stopwatch. So that will mean we're going to have to introduce buttons, a little bit more code, and change the font to be able to get more information on the matrices. So stay tuned and enjoy. Okay, so here's our simple piece of code and you can adapt it for ESP32 and Arduino. The most important thing for Arduino, you need to load this extra library. So um, make sure you've got that in before you start. So we're using an ESP8266 as normal and we're using a four-way matrix, but you can use just a solo matrix, a one-way matrix. You just got to alter one digit in the code to make it work. And obviously you won't be able to count up so high as a four digit one. So we've got our includes, then we are gonna define the pins that we're using for our device. And I'm stating we've got a four way matrix. If you've got a single one, change that to a one. Then we need to define our hardware. Now there's four different choices. If you're struggling to get this to, to work and you've got strange digits coming up on your screen, go and see video one in this series and it'll tell you what you need to change in this line here. So then we're declaring, uh, as we've done in other videos, and I'm calling my declaration P for Parola. Then we need to make what we call a small buffer. So an area in, in memory where we can store some information. And as we're counting, we need to define a counter. So this is just saying it's an integer and the counter is going to equal to zero. In the setup loop, I'm going to have serial begin. That can come out, we don't actually need it. But if you wanted to write any debug code, you would need to start that. So then I'm starting our version of uh, the matrix, setting the intensity low. And I've put a note here about keeping it lower than three. As in this example, I'm powering the matrices, so a four-way matrix off the, the ESP chip directly from the USB port. That's not advisable to do if you're going to make a production piece of code or project because it's not the best way to run all that power through the small voltage regulator on the chip. So this is an important thing here. We are going to come back to this one and see why it's important. So don't worry about how we've done it. Just take it for granted it will work. So this is set in the font. And you'll notice we've got two files so up here. We've got a font file and in the font file, we've got a font and I've called it dig five by eight square. And in another video, we're going to come back into this code and we're going to edit this uh, font as I don't particularly like it. So don't worry about it now, but this is going to give you all the different um, fonts you need. But the important thing for our code today is from line 53 down to 62. And this is giving us the digits from zero to nine. But as you see down here, we do have available um, capital letters, uh, small letters. So we, we've got it all available, but we are only using the top part. So let's get back to the code. So that's it. That's all set up. Now we're going to loop. Now in Parola, you use this line to see whether there's an, any animations ready to be shown on the display. And this is why it's important if you're using Arduino that you need to load in the sprintf command. So this is going to look what we've got in the buffer and in the buffer is going to be the digits and the number. Then we need to say um, how many digits do you want shown on the screen 100% of the time? So because I only want the digits to grow in size from zero, say to 10, then you have two digits, then you have 100, 
then you have a thousand, then you have nine hundred and nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. If you change that to a four, what you'll have, you'll have zero 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 one, zero 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 two, zero 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 three. So it will count up. Um, so that's what that one does, and I put a note there to do it. And this is Joe just saying that in this buffer, you're going to look at the counter, and that's counting up from zero to. In our case, we're going to stop it further down in the code because we don't want it over overflowing the screen. So in Parola, um, we need to um, tell what we want printed Thank on the you. screen. So we want to print the buffer. So that's going to be a number. We want it centered. This is the speed in and pause time. And this is the way we want it to display on the screen. So we just want it to appear on the screen as if it's just printing. We don't want any special effects. So this is the in effect and this is the out effect. So we're going to come back to this in future videos. So then we increase the counter by one by using this line here. Then this is a very dirty way to do a counter and it's delaying the code by a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. So that basically is blocking everything your processor is doing for one second and then it will start again so in other videos we will we'll use a millis loop which allows your processor to do other thing while it's waiting for one second to clock up now this if statement this is needed because the counter will keep counting indefinitely um, and if in our case we get over if I set that right, 99,000. Uh, yes, that's right. So if it if the counter goes over 99,999, we get an extra digit. And if we allow that to happen, that won't all fit on the screen because the font we're using is quite big. And the one at the beginning and the zero at the end sorry the zero at the end will fall off the screen um and in the case because we are centered the one will just be partially off the screen on the left hand side so you can set this to anything so if you wanted your counter to stop at say 100 you could um, put 100 in there and once it gets to 100 it will revert back to zero because we're saying that if the counter equals whatever number you put in here then let the counter equal zero. And when it loops around again, it will print a zero. Um, and that's it. So that's your counter. So let's have a look at the counter in operation. So here's the counter working and you can clearly see it started at zero and it's counting up. And what I said in the video here, if you look at the nine, you see where the nine comes, the line comes down here and the, the other number and the four, the lines up here for the other numbers and what we're going to do we're going to adjust that so it becomes level all the way through so that's counting up so let me just alter the code now slightly to make the, the counter count quickly um so rather waiting for one second it we're, we're going to make it make a, you know a few milliseconds and we can see it count up much quicker so you can see I've adjusted the code and it's it's only waiting 60 milliseconds now. And when it gets to 100, it will start again. So that's what you can do. So now what I'm going to show you is what happens if we take out the if statement and we show you how the screen overflows. So I've adjusted the code now to start, I think it was 99,700 and something, we'll see it in a minute, and I've reduced it to count up in seconds so we can see what happens with the screen. So you can see I've started the counter at a very high value, and what it's going to do is going to overflow, and you can see the numbers won't fit on the screen. So there you go, the one's just fit in, but this number's fallen off the screen. And that's why it's important that we've got the if statement at the bottom of the code to prevent that from happening because it doesn't look very professional. And, you know, when the number gets bigger, you'll never see the end digits. So that's why we did it. 
So here's the if statement working correctly. I started the counter at a high value, and when it gets up to 999999, it should go back to zero. There you go. So that meant the screen didn't overflow, and that's an awful lot of seconds. We can convert those seconds into minutes, and yeah, it's, it's a long duration of time. And that should be reasonably accurate because we're just delaying um, the code. It's not the best way we could have used millis. So in the next part of the video, we're going to introduce buttons to make this code more useful because at the moment it's just counting seconds and you can't stop it and you can't start it other than plugging the power Thank in now, which isn't very convenient. So we're going to introduce buttons, which will be another piece of code. We're going to introduce debouncing because you may not know that if you press a button, you may think you've just turned it on and off. But because the microcontroller works so quickly, you get a thing called bouncing. And the microcontroller might think you pressed it 10 times. And that can obviously up upset the code. And we're also going to look at the font because I, 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 when you, number four comes, and you can see this line goes down, then it jumps back up. And I don't really like that. So, yeah, that's going to be another video, how these fonts were created and how you can make any font or character, Space Invader, hearts, Christmas trees, anything like or numbers or letters, you can make your own font. So we're going to be covering that in videos to come. But I thought we'd get something up basically working. So it's an introduction to the two libraries we're using, getting these fantastic little matrices, showing something useful. And that's it. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know if you've made it. Let me know any problems you uh, um, discover and we can work out the problems together and check back in in a, in a week or so and see what advances I've made on this project. Anyway, that's Andy now wishing you a very good afternoon.